speak about um, spiritual discipline. And um, before I go into that, I have a few questions. I'm going to put some images up there. And um, I just wanted to guess who, then I'll say something about the people. I thought we were going to have a larger congregation than this, but we're very few. <laughs> so we're going to still make do with that. The first person or not that? Who is that? Is a well-known face? Capelli. Yeah. 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 With Brazil, Pele was the greatest footballer of the century. Okay, he scored how many? One thousand two hundred eighty-one goals in wow. one thousand three sixty-three games. Since retirement, Pele has become a global ambassador of sports and the well-known advocate for overcoming poverty. Wow! I mean, that's an amazing mm -hmm. achievement for any human being. Okay, let's the next person. Let's see if we can guess who is this. Okay, Federa, yeah. What do you know about Federa before we talk? Okay, it's already clear. Okay, go on, go on, let's talk about him. Yeah. Since 1981 he was born, uh, he, won, he won a record-breaking 20 single Grand Slam titles. Wow. He's still the, I think he's still the highest so far, Grand Slam. And uh, closely followed by uh, Rafa Nadal, 19 right now, catching up closely. Um, number one world ranking for 310 weeks. Many consider him to be the greatest tennis player of all time. Wow. Okay, I'm sure the next two will be difficult. Let's see. Who is that? Juan Carlos. Hey. <laughs> That's the chat, yes. Well done. Yeah, well done. Hey, what about him? Yeah, he's a US. Uh, hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah, most decorated Olympian of all time won 18 Olympic gold medals. That's a major achievement. Sure. I mean, it's not, it's not very popular, but I'm sure I'm happy someone there does it. Now, the last one. Who is that? Okay. Let's see. Is that the one that just won the. Is that? Yes, just that's won the. She can do her shoulder back and she's out of the tournament at the moment, but I forgot her name. Okay, she's a golfer, obviously. She's only a golfer. Yeah, okay, yeah, let's see. But she's here, man. Her name is Annika Sorrestam, 1970, Sweden golf, most successful female golfer. Sorrestam has won 72 official LPGA. I mean, if it was a girl, does the world not take a wood and the rest of them off? Yeah. Now, what's common to, with all these guys, if I may quickly ask? What's common about them? Just randomly. Sports, Sports they are successful. Oh, yeah, she is. Hi, achievement. You say what? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I must say they have some English achievers, but I only selected not the not too popular ones and one or two popular ones. Yes, okay. Let's look at the next slide. Tell me about them. So, okay, they are successful sportsmen. Outperform others in their sports categories. Okay, um, they consistently achieve success. They are famous. They are rich. They won many trophies, medals, accolades. The best in their career. And did they achieve this by just living like everyone like them? They worked hard. Mm. They were disciplined. They were, I mean, they, they decided to push harder than the rest of them. Like I said earlier, I just want to talk about spiritual discipline. And um, the next slide, please. Spiritual discipline. And um, the Bible, let's open our Bibles to Philippians 2. I'll just read from the Therefore, my friends, sorry, yeah, therefore, my friends, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. That passage is talking about working out our salvation with fear and trembling. I know it's not very often we, we get to talk to ourselves about, you know, fear and trembling. Oh. It says here, no salvation can be earned by works. So you might be wondering, why are saying, work out your salvation? We can't, we, can't, we can't earn our salvation, okay? We, it is by our work. 
John 3.16 says that, uh, um, okay, I didn't put the passage there. For God so loved the world, he gave his only one of the son, yeah. that whoever believes will be saved, okay? So that is, we got our salvation, not by our works, but it says that we need to express expression of your salvation in spiritual growth and development. That's what he's talking about, working out our salvation with fear and trembling. We need to express our salvation in spiritual growth and development. This requires work. It requires discipline. It's not just once saved, always saved. It's not just a gift that we take, we get, and it's, it's just there. Okay, salvation is not a gift received once for all. It's an ongoing active process of perseverance, humble service, spiritual growth, and being matured. All right? I just want to look at only one point today. It's going to be about perseverance. Because um, to achieve anything, we're going to face different challenges, different um, difficult moments, but when we persevere, we can always overcome. And that's just what I feel I need to encourage us about today. If we read Matthew 4, 13, it says, But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. When we stand firm to the end, when we persevere in our Christian faith, we will definitely be saved at the end right. of the day. We're not, we're not going to fall short of our expectation as Christians the next time, please. So, like I said, I've got only one point today. It's called perseverance. And perseverance, I mean, I'm sure we all understand what it means to persevere. It's just to basically you know, endure. Okay, 1 Corinthians 9. I just read this passage to us now. It says here, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. You know, I beat my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified from the prize. Here, Paul is th was talking to um, the Gentiles in one of his uh, second and third missionary journey. He's talking about how we need to, you know, we need to be more purposeful. Does it say it doesn't run like an aimless person? Please, the next slide. Oh. I mean, that image shows um, some men running and all that. It says, all the runners run, but only one get the prize. You know, it's all about survival. It's about someone who is able to keep fighting to the very end. So everyone who competes goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. The next slide, please. But we as Christians, in our Christian race, what do we do? We're competing for a crown, okay, that will last forever. And um, our reference there is 1 Peter 5, verse 4. Paul says he doesn't run aimlessly. How, how can someone run aimlessly? As Christians, in our Christian race, we can run aimlessly when we just flow with whatever happens. You just wake up, come to church, you're not really thinking, you're not really having that one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. That is running aimlessly the Christian race. Mm. When challenges come, we get discouraged and waiting for everyone to come around you and say, oh, get well. That is like aimless. But there's, well, there's no purpose. Okay, when you're running to win, like the mm. people we've talked about, they don't wait for people to come and meet them. They are the ones that push. And that's what Paul is saying. He says it doesn't run aimlessly. Paul, Paul severely disciplines his own body in serving Christ, not to be disqualified for the price. Okay, if we don't discipline ourselves, we may run the risk of being disqualified. Because for every race, there's a rule. And if you don't run by that rule, you wow. get disqualified. Yeah. And where can we find the rule? It's from the scriptures. And that's why the Christian race actually requires us reading the Bible so we can understand the rules of running that race so I don't get disqualified. It doesn't come easy. I mean, everyone is very busy these days. You wake up in the morning, you're rushing to meet someone. Um, maybe an appointment, the children, you want to do so many things. You come back home at night, you're tired. At work, there's no time to do anything. 
But we cannot run our Christian race in a, you know, aimlessly. Okay. Paul also realizes that he must run with vigor. With he must run with vigor to serve the Lord. And sorry, Paul realizes that he must run with vigor to serve the Lord and battle against sin. Okay. For for us as Christians in our Christian race, just like Paul. I mean, Paul is a very great person. He's a is 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 someone who is who actually met Christ. He's, he's one who has been the, uh, given the role to convert even the Gentiles. Mm-hmm. With such a great mission, he could still deny himself, he could still fight. He realized he still needs to fight. How about us today? Mm-hmm. We need to realize that it's not just a kind of, I mean, the Christian race is not just like a everyday party. It's not like an everyday, you know, um, what's the word to do? It's, it's not just easy peasy all the time. We need to be on our toes. We need to always be ready to deny ourselves. We need to be ready to, you know, to, to fight because Satan is not, he's, he's always there to, to bring us down, looking for one thing or that to trip us. Because if we're not alert, we realize that we're not going to be like Paul, okay? Now, the next slide, please. Um, James 1, 2 to 3 and verse 12 says here, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Blessed is the man who persevere under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of, of life that God has promised to those who love him. Mm-hmm. Say, so as Christians, our faith will be tested. Our faith will be tested. And that's where perseverance comes in. I don't know what we're going through, you know, today, the next time. I don't know what we're going through today as Christians, but the question is, how is your faith being tested? We have different situations. No, I'm sure no two Christians, no two disciples probably face the same amount of tests in their faith. It might be at work, it might be at job, it might be with friends, it might be in finance, it could be in anything. I mean, for me personally, this year has been a bit challenging. Um, I know many people are already aware since March, I've been having, you know, challenges in the sense that at work, the last time I was assigned a role to, to play in terms of, I mean, as a, as a quantity surveyor was in March. Until this day, I've not really been very active, and uh, for so many, I mean, for so many months, I just go to work, sitting down, waiting to be assigned a role, and it wasn't a very comfortable position to be in. Yep. And I kept asking myself, "What's happening?" You know, I know there's a tendency when we face trials as Christians to say, "Maybe because I've sinned." There's a tendency to feel that we're going through trials challenges, situations because, or because we haven't prayed, mm-hmm. or to say because we haven't read the Bible the way we should read the Bible, or because oh, I, didn't, I didn't go to church the last few days, maybe this is why I'm going through all these challenges. I mean, God doesn't treat us like humans. It's we humans that have the tendency to think that way, that, oh, things are not happening because I didn't do this. God's love for us is consistent. His love for us is not conditional. Mm. But he says we have to face trials. We have to face challenges. Our faith must be tested. Like I said, in this period, my faith was obviously tested. And I, I went through a lot in my mind. I'm like, at some point, I'm thinking, if I don't, I don't get assigned a role, my employers may kick me out. And I'll be out there looking for a job. And if I don't find a job within two, three months, because... I'm on a two visa. I want to pack my things and leave the country. I mean, I've thought to the point that oh. is everything coming to an end suddenly. What? Why, why did I get it wrong? You know, I, I had a lot going through my mind, and mm-hmm. as a matter of fact, I had a sit with the HR and they gave me a day that look, if they can't find a role for me by sometime in May, I will have to go. They're going to pay me certain money and. So that got me thinking and worried, you know. But I knew I was going through some challenges, but I also realized I've got to be persistent. I've got to persevere in my, in my faith. And of course, I started pushing and 
and walking and um, praying and, you know, asking disciples to pray, you know, for strength, for encouragement and, you know, for, to achieve, you know, to get another job. And um, I'm sure many of you also are aware that I've found another job um, in Portsmouth, even though I'll be, I'll be having to go for that. It, it happens to be a job that I'm very happy about, um, the kind of job I've always thought about doing sometime in my lifetime. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's something, you know, that ticked the box for me. So, my question is, what's our attitude when we face those trials? Do we get discouraged? Do we wait for someone to come and be, you know, chasing us and waiting for other people to come and, you know, seeking attention? And when you don't get those attention, you just sulk and start feeling like, Oh, disciples are not friendly, or things are not going the way they are. Yeah. They should go. Yeah. The Bible says you consider it pure joy when we face trials. You should consider it pure joy when our faith are tested. Of course, at the time of those trials and challenges, they don't come easy. It, it, it's not an easy thing to go through. But whatever it is, I don't know that anyone is going through here. You should know that God has got your back. You see, it's, it's always there for us. He just wants us to go through that space to encourage us to become stronger as disciples. So all we need to do is to persevere. Amen. So, so life may be tough right now, but we shouldn't give up. Romans 5, 3 says, Rejoice in our suffering. Not rejoice about your suffering, but even when you're going through suffering, when you're going through things, that we don't expect, it says we should rejoice. Because at the end of the day, when you persevere, there will be, there'll, there'll be a lot to benefit if we don't give up. And a lot of people have probably given up. Oh, God is not there for me. So why should I serve Him? God is not there when I need Him most. Why should I, you know, come to church? I mean, many of you are aware. I lost, I lost a brother not too long ago, and those are some, some of the, you know, situations that could have made me feel like, come on, why, is, why are all these things happening? Mm. But we shouldn't give up. We should persevere because God is always there. Because in every suffering that we overcome, we become stronger. Our faith gets encouraged and gets strengthened. So whatever your situation, persevere because there's a crown waiting for us at the end of the day. Mm. I think uh, the next one, uh, Second Timothy talked about, um, said, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is a store for me in the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. I mean, the various uh, sportsmen we showed earlier on, they've all achieved different accolades, different achievements, but we're made to understand that those are things or prizes that will never last. Mm. Some, are, some people get broke but after having all the wealth and all the achievements because those are worldly wealth that don't last forever. But in Christian race, we're in a race where we're aiming to get a treasure, a crown of glory that will last forever. Not only on this earth, but even after. So we should persevere because like Paul, he says, he has run the race. Paul went through the race and he survived. And if he is able to do that, we should be able to say yes at the end of our time here that we have also run the race and we have overcome. I think the next one, please. The next one. So we talk about the communion. Oh, okay. All right? Amen. Yeah. yeah. So, like I said later on, so Paul is able to look back and declare that I have fought the good fight and I've kept the faith because he persevered. Okay, before we take the communion, I just want to also have this now, to take a moment to think about it. Those little challenges we're going through, how are we, you know, facing it? Are we getting discouraged or are we persevering? Are we thinking like Paul that someday want to look back and say, yes, I have also overcome. So like Paul will be able to finish the Christian race 
if we don't give up. Okay? Let's think about how, uh, how can we grow in our faith and remain strong in the face of trials through spiritual uh, discipline. So I'm going to pray for the bride and wine now and the first one. Let's pray. I dare Father, thank you God for this morning. Thank you for Jesus who died and gave up his body and uh, his blood to cleanse us and uh, help us have a relationship with him as we take the bread this morning. Help us, Father, Lord, to, to be encouraged and uh, persevere in, uh, in our daily life because the question raised obviously is not easy, but when we persevere to the very end, you promise us the crown. I pray, God, that I will be there for one another and encourage each other. In Jesus' name, we pray.